America's evil genius, Travis Cook, back with you once again for just a brief comment this evening on what might be an impending government shutdown. As I tape this piece for you on uh, Monday night, September 30th, uh, we are just three or four hours away from an, a possible government shutdown. And as we speak right now, there is fervent work up on Capitol Hill uh, going on about this. And of course, the cable news channels are all in a tizzy. They're all talking about this. Facebook is all talking about this. Twitter is going apoplectic. And as we speak, there are liberals all over the place on social media, on television, on radio, and what have you. All putting a bunch of BS out there. All bemoaning this possible government shutdown. Well, I wanted to set a couple, th couple things straight, if you don't mind, so you have uh, something to listen to that will make some sense of uh, some of this poppycock that you're hearing out of the left tonight. Uh, first things first, one of the biggest things we've been hearing all along, and we're certainly hearing it tonight, is the accusation that the conservatives are willing to risk a government shutdown in order to defund Obamacare. Well, I will answer that this way. As a conservative myself, as a proud conservative, as a Tea Partier, as a proud American, I can tell you, as a voter, I can tell you that I personally, yes, I am in favor of risking a government shutdown to defund Obamacare. Now, I don't know how many Republican uh, elected leaders or congressmen that you'll get to go on record saying that. There might be a few. Uh, there's probably quite a few that won't go on record saying that. Some that believe as I do but won't say it. Others that don't believe as I do and, and of course, won't say it. But I am in favor of that kind of risk because, as I said on my show just a couple weeks ago, I don't see that there's very much risk at all behind it. I'm not saying there won't be a government shutdown, but if there is, I don't see why it's such a big risk. I don't really see how much we really lose from it. Think about something. The government has actually had 17 government shutdowns, I believe is the number, 17 government shutdowns since the late 1970s. Now I want you to think back, take just a moment and think back to how many situations you went through during a government shutdown, one of those previous 17 government shutdowns, where you experienced a horrible and life-altering result from the government shutdown. Having a hard time thinking of one, aren't you? Yeah, me too. You know why you're having a hard time thinking of that? Because it's never happened. For most people, anyway. The vast majority of us have not been affected one iota from any of the government shutdowns that have happened. Why? Because, frankly, we don't have nearly as much need for a federal government as people think we do. And certainly don't have a need for the large and expansive federal government that exists today. So I don't think we're risking very much by a potential government shutdown. Sure, there's going to be some jobs that, that might be temporarily lost, but I think that says more to us about uh, a cautionary tale of how many jobs we have wrapped up in the public sector, and maybe we need to look at trying to get some of those things moved to the private sector. That's another discussion for another time. But more to the point, while the right is certainly in tune and certainly open to risking a government shutdown to defund Obamacare, a very similar attitude exists right now on the left. They are not without blame on this either. The dirty little secret right here is the left, including Barack Obama, is all so willing to risk a government shutdown themselves just to keep Obamacare going, just to make sure it's funded. They're playing every bit of the so-called hostage-taking game that we are. In fact, Barack Obama, his own self today, said it in a press conference or in a little speech he made. Here are his words. I am going to quote directly from the imbecile in chief. Barack Obama's words right here, quote, all of this is entirely preventable if the House chooses to do what the Senate has already done. And that's the simple act of funding our government without making extraneous and controversial demands in the process. Well, Barack, it's six of one and a half a dozen of the other. Because you see, the House has sent legislation to the Senate to keep funding the government. Not that I particularly care if the government is funded. But they've sent legislation to the House that would continue funding the government if you defund Obamacare or even if you delay it for a year. So everything you just accused us of could be turned right around and pointed at you. I could take your phrase and adjust it this way and it would be perfectly truthful. 
All of this is entirely preventable if the Senate chooses to do what the House has already done. And that's the simple act of funding our government without making extraneous and controversial demands such as funding Obamacare. You see, Mr. Obama, your demands are just as extraneous and controversial as ours are. It's six of one and a half dozen of the other. Now, I want to address a couple of other arguments that the left is making as we speak. One thing I am hearing all over the place on social media, television, radio, and the like are libs just being beside themselves and saying, well, Obama cares the law. Obama cares the law. you got to go along with it. Obama cares the law. Well, you know something? There was a time in our history that denying women the right to vote was also the law. But did those who are in favor of women's suffrage just sit by and say, well, that's the law, we can't change it, just got to live with it. No, of course they didn't do that. They fought. They got it overturned. Prohibition was one time the law. Back more than the law, it was a constitutional amendment. Did opponents of prohibition say, well, I loved my beer back in the day, but it's the law now, so that's just how it's going to be. Time to move on to something else. No, of course they didn't do that. Jim Crow was the law at one time. Slavery was the law at one time. You see, America has a long and storied and proud history of overcoming and destroying laws that we believe to be unjust when they are on our books. We do not sit back and accept unjust laws. We've never done that in this country, and God help us. God willing, we never will. So yeah, Obama cares the law right now. But that means we've got to redouble our efforts to overcome it. You know, previous generations had their fights. They fought unjust laws, such as denying women the rights to vote or slavery or Jim Crow or any of those things. This is our generation's unjust law to overcome. This is our generation's slavery. This is our generation's Jim Crow. This is our generation's women's suffrage. This is our generation's moment to act on the stead of humanity and overcome injustice. And that is exactly what we are doing. No American left. We will not accept an unjust law just as Americans for over 200 years have not stood by and accepted unjust law. And there's one final argument I'm hearing tonight that I want to dispel. I'm hearing a lot of liberals saying, well, Obama won the election. Obama won the election. The people voted for health care. Well, a presidential election never comes down to only one issue, although health care was a, a significant part of it. But nevertheless, yes, Obama did win the election. I will grant you that. But they use that as though that is an excuse for everybody to just stand by or even aid and abet Barack Obama in implementing this monstrosity. But the people who make this argument overlook perhaps intentionally one extremely important thing. Yes, Barack Obama won his election, but all of those representatives and even those senators who are opposing and obstructing Barack Obama and Obamacare right now, all of those people won their elections too. And many of them won their elections in districts where Barack Obama absolutely got his ass handed to him at the ballot box. Now in that scenario, I want you to think of something. If you're a representative who won your election and you won it in a district that hands down voted against Barack Obama in the presidential election, what message should you take from that? Should you take the message that it's your job to stand by and even, even stand by and let Obama get his way or even help him? No, that's not what the voters are telling you at all. The people that elect you to office, the people that will determine whether you have a job at the next election are telling you to oppose everything Barack Obama stands for. That's what those votes mean. And that's why our founding fathers were wise enough to create a divided government where you had this back and forth, you had this pushback, where it was somewhat difficult to get laws passed, where it was somewhat difficult to do big things. Because our founding fathers understood that most of what is great in this world, most of what is worth accomplishing in this world are things that are accomplished by the individual, not by a government. That's why they made it so dadgum difficult to get legislation passed. And thank God they did. 
to all of you who are criticizing the gridlock in government, to all of you who are criticizing obstruction from the Tea Party, I want you to know that what you're seeing right now is government as it was intended. And it's a beautiful thing, whether you're smart enough to realize it or not. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we owe you a Gallo 100th America's Evil Genius episode that will be taped in just a few days here as we go through what we've learned in these 100 episodes over these last couple of years. But I did want to take a brief moment tonight to dispel some of the asinine arguments that the left is giving us tonight, perhaps just hours away from a government shutdown. This is America's Evil Genius, Travis Cook. We will see you next time.